Welcome to another episode of Pooches at Play. Sydney has turned on the sunshine for us this week. It sure has. It's still a bit chilly though, but I'm glad to see you and Dars got the double denim brief. Yeah, and you got the memo about the blue shirt. Oh, and the black jeans and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this week I'm going to show you all the great places you can take your dog in Sydney, my backyard. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring lots of training tips as well as other information to help keep you and your pooch healthy and happy. Exactly. So grab a cup of tea, maybe a wine, and sit back, relax, and just watch the show. Uh, Morgs, it's not even afternoon yet. Yeah, this week's breed in focus is the poodle, whose origin is still debated over whether the poodle descends from Germany as a water retrieving hunting dog or from the French barbet, also a water dog breed. Poodles are alert, they're highly intelligent and trainable, they're loyal and they're active. <laughs> they're generally friendly, happy dogs who love to socialise and are most content when they are being the centre of attention. They love learning tricks, obedience, they're great at agility and they're also loyal. They do tend to be shy around strangers but they are alert and curious so they will alarm owners when a person or animal is approaching. So a good little guard dog. The personality and temperament of your poodle will ultimately depend on the kind of owner that you are though. When a poodle's mental and physical needs are being met, they make great companions. If they're not, like many dogs, they will become bored and restless and they'll be prone to getting into trouble, which we don't want. No, especially when you have to hold them in front of a camera, they <laughs> get a little restless. And they come in at three sizes. You've got the standard poodle, a miniature and toy with an expected lifespan of about 12 to 14 years. Their hypoallergenic coat needs regular professional grooming mm -hmm. and comes in a variety of colours. In recent years, poodles have been crossed with many other pure breeds to create cavoodles, Badoodle. Labradoodle, Groodle, Zoodles of Poodles and the Multipoo like Darcy. Uh, yes. They're very active creatures. The smaller breeds probably need less daily exercise than the standard poodle, but they still all need plenty of activity. As you can see, they are balls of energy, so you need to release that energy and they must use their minds as much as their bodies. So this is where obedience training comes in. Really great with poodles, they excel at it. Uh, they can also be prone to separation anxiety and they can become stressed uh, in chaotic homes, so they like their people and they're quiet. Yeah. Poodles make an excellent choice for families of all sizes and ages and are a great breed for first time dog owners. Since toy poodles are smaller, they are able to live in apartments and however, the larger poodles usually require more space and are better suited to live in houses or homes with a yard. Poodles require a lot of attention. You think? Yeah, <laughs> and want to be around their family a lot. So they're not a kind of breed you want to leave in their backyard alone. On the health front, poodles are prone to epilepsy, but this can be controlled fortunately with medication. Other health concerns with poodles is Addison's disease, thyroid issues, and also they can have some skin allergies. So to get a quote from Bow Wow Meow Pet Insurance, specific to the poodle or to cover your own dog from illness and injury, visit their website. And if you'd like to find out more about the poodle and if it's compatible with your lifestyle, mm. go to the Bow Wow Meow <laughs> Breed Selector and you can work it out from there. That's right, really important to research your breed, so check that out. It'll be a great use and you can find out everything you need to know. Yeah. Well done, Hazel. You good girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good girl. Most dog owners would have learned in puppy school that the way we get a dog to do something that we want is by rewarding them for a behaviour with something that they want at the time they're demonstrating it. Think about when they're sitting or they're dropping in puppy school, what do we do? We reward them with a treat, a pat or praise when they're doing a behaviour at that time. That way the dog learns that it has good consequences and as a result it happens with more intensity and frequency. This brings me to a common problem behaviour though that we often therefore face is when we accidentally reinforce a behaviour that we don't want without even realising. We call this inadvertent reinforcement. An example of this is say when our dog is barking at us or we're then jumping up at us, often what we do is we bend down, we touch them and what have we given them? Exactly what they want, your attention. Keeping this in mind, that's why it's really important to set the boundaries early as possible with our puppies. Even with older dogs, if you don't want them to be doing a behaviour, then make sure you're not reinforcing it without realising it. Set the boundaries nice and early and be consistent with them. Treats are a great way to do this because when your dog is at home, just day to day, you don't just have to use them in obedience training. You could have some little treats on hand and then that way when they are displaying a behaviour that you want, nice, calm, sitting around, for example, 
You could give them a treat then by marking that behaviour and that's the kind of stuff that you're going to see more from them because you're really marking and rewarding that. What we want to do of course then is we don't want to be rewarding when they are doing those jumps or those barks. We want to ignore that behaviour and the moment they're going quiet or they've got all four feet on the ground, we reward them then. So that's why it's handy to have those treats. Milky sticks for example are great with puppies because they've got calcium in them but also they break up really small. Chicken sticks for older dogs are great too because they can break up into small pieces. And then that way if we've got a little pocket full, we're not going to be over treating but we're going to be able to reward that behaviour day to day that we want from them. Another important thing to remember when you're trying to set boundaries and not reward unwanted behaviour is to make sure everyone in the household is following the same rules. So if you don't want your puppy to be jumping up on the couch as an older dog or up on you, then you really shouldn't be encouraging it when they are a puppy. Again, it's really important that when we're using treats to reward our dogs that we're not giving them more than 10% of their total calorie intake. We want to be responsibly treating for that good behaviour. And then another great thing as well is to use praise in between as well, just so that we're not always feeding our dog for behaviours that we want. For more puppy tips and information about treating responsibly, visit the VitaPet website. <coughs> now that Darcy's getting a little older and has some joint and arthritis issues, I thought I'd find out what I need to consider to get him his next bed with lots of comfort. I'll find out for you while I'm in there as well. Come on, Darcy. Let's get your new bed. Yeah. Kate, let's start with puppies. What should we be looking for in a bed? Sure. Well, Lexi and me have a great range for puppies. Mm -hmm. So we've got the lovely round plush bed and we also have the bolster bed here. These are not just good for puppies, but they're also good for cats and small dogs. I really like that they've got raised edges mm. so that they can burrow in and that they do feel more secure. And the other thing that I like about the raised edges is that it always keeps them warm and it blocks the drafts from the floor. Yes, and they're good enough and small enough for crate training as well. Mm, absolutely. And if there is an accident and if they do get wet or dirty, they're both small enough and light enough that they can safely go through the washing machine. Nice. And for adult dogs then, which should we be looking All for? All right. So with your adult dog, you'll, you'll know your dog by the time they're an adult, whether they're a dog that loves spreading out and sleeping yes. um, or whether they do like curling up into a ball. So even some of the large dogs still prefer to curl mm. up and be in a ball. Uh, the bolster bed does come in medium and large sizes. So if you've got a larger dog that does curl up, this is the bed for them. Mm -hmm. If you do have one that likes to lay out and, and stretch stretch out, then the flat bed is a really good option for them. And actually all of the Lexi and Me comfort range are made out of 100% recycled polyester too. Yes, which is fantastic. Awesome. For both the flat bed and, and the plush beds, they've got a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So if you do have your large breed dog that is very heavy, it is really important that they actually have got a lot of cushioning. Yes. They are prone to getting calluses and sore, like sores over their bony prominences. I see that in labs a bit. Yes, definitely elbows yes. and over their hocks on their back legs. So mm -hmm. the softer, the big soft and thick supportive beds are great for them. Okay, and outdoor dogs? Yes, yeah, so we need something different out, outdoors, obviously, because it's got to, got to uh, survive outside. So these are fabulous beds for outdoors. They've got legs on them, so they do raise up off the ground. So once again, you're avoiding the drafts. They're very easy to be cleaned. They can just be hosed down. We call them flea resistant, but that basically means that they're not encouraging fleas to bed in them. So they're not going to harbour flea nests, which is great. So these are fabulous for outdoors and they're very strong and sturdy. Okay, now Darcy is getting on a bit, sorry mate, a bit like your mum. So I was thinking that I do want to look at something a bit more supportive for him that offers yeah, that orthopaedic support. So I was thinking about the memory foam bed. Absolutely. So if we do have any arthritic issues, mm -hmm. joint issues um, or just a, a elderly, elderly dog, uh, these beds have been specially made for those patients. So they're memory foam beds and they come in the, the various sizes mm -hmm. as you can see. So the big thing I like about them is that they're obviously very, very soft to lie on and they can sink a little bit into them, yes. but they maintain their shape, so they maintain their support. For the big dogs, once they've had a long sleep, or the arthritic dogs, when they wake up, they can be very stiff and they need to be able to get off the bed easily. If they've got a really big, big soft bed that they sink into, it's actually hard for them to get off. So of these beds are fantastic for that. Alrighty, well Darce, I think we might get you one of these, hey, nice memory foam bed. I might even get one for myself, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Pleasure. If you'd like to check out the Lexi and Me range and other dog beds, visit your pet stock store. Thank you. What one do you want? Yeah? <coughs> Like human babies, puppies and kittens are at high risk of contracting life-threatening infectious diseases. 
Cleverly, protection is transferred from mum via antibodies acquired through suckling shortly after birth. But the number of antibodies acquired can vary greatly amongst litter mates and wanes to an unprotective level within a couple of months. This is why vaccinations play an essential role in keeping your puppy healthy. The core vaccine for dogs protects against canine distemper, hepatitis, also known as adenovirus, and parvovirus, which can all be deadly. Puppies need a course of three vaccinations from around six to eight weeks of age. There are additional vaccines for parainfluenza virus and Bordetella bronchoseptica. These are called non-core vaccines and they reduce the symptoms of a disease commonly known as canine cough. We used to call this disease kennel cough, but it isn't just dogs in kennels who are at risk. Anywhere dogs interact in close proximity like doggy daycare, puppy preschools, grooming salons and even dog parks or communal water bowls can be a source of infection. Canine cough affects the respiratory system and causes a persistent dry hacking cough, which in some cases can progress to pneumonia or chronic bronchitis. Other symptoms include sneezing, a runny nose or eye discharge. As the level of immunity can decrease over time, it's important to keep your dog's vaccinations up to date. This not only protects your dog, but when enough dogs in the community are vaccinated, it then helps to control and prevent the spread of deadly infectious diseases throughout the pet population. But with owners moving away from vaccinations, we've seen some cluster outbreaks of parvovirus and other diseases in recent years. There's a lot of discussion about the potential adverse effects of vaccinations. And as a veterinarian, we have a duty to both the pet and the owner to objectively examine the current scientific evidence available. Like the vast majority of vets around the world, I recognise that whilst adverse reactions do exist, the benefits of protection far outweigh the slight risk of a vaccination reaction. I've treated dogs with parvovirus. It's heartbreaking. Even with the best treatment, some will die. The worst thing is that it's a preventable disease. You may have heard of titer testing for antibody levels to decide whether a vaccination booster is required. This is now available, but only for the core diseases and not for the non-core. So it's important to talk to your vet about your dog's vaccination needs to ensure that they are covered, as prevention is always better than finding a cure. Isn't it, guys? Definitely. A snuffle mat is an enrichment activity that taps into your dog's greatest sense, their sense of smell. And of course, when a dog is using their nose, it's actually releasing endorphins and it's getting their bodies and their brains moving. So it's a great all round tool. Now, the good thing about a snuffle mat is really easy to use and it's good for dogs, even if they're not into interactive toys. To start off, if you've got a puppy or a dog that's not used one before, you would just place the treats, little broken up treats here are good. We don't want to overfeed our dog with treats. And we just place them on the top of the mat. It's important as well, particularly with puppies, if you have got a first timer, we don't want to allow them to be pulling at it or chewing it. So if they do start to do that, uh, issue them into a sit and reward that or a leave it and then you can reward that as well so that you're working in a bit of obedience too. Once they've got the hang of that, we can really start to bury them nice and deep so they're really starting to use their cognitive skills and their problem solving ability. Again, great for puppies to really develop that in them. And you can also then to start moving them up to their kibble if you feed a dry dog food. So then that way you're actually getting your dog working for their food like they would in the wild. They start foraging for their food rather than giving it to them in the bowl. So it's good for fast food eaters as well. We want to take it away after a few times so that we don't allow the dog to get bored and start chewing it as well. As I said, it is really good way just to get their brains and bodies moving. Did you know, in fact, that 15 minutes on a snuffle mat is the same as taking your dog for an hour walk, burning off all those calories? So not only is it a great mental game, it's also really good for their bodies. You can make your own. I'm not that crafty, so if you're like me, then just Google online snuffle mat and you'll find it. But if you are feeling crafty, it's simply a rubber mat it's got some fleece put through the middle, tied in a knot, and voila, you've got your own snuffle mat. So give it a try, particularly if your dog really loves using their nose. It's a great exercise for both of you. While well, Sydney may have many beautiful beaches along its harbour foreshore, not many can say they are truly dog friendly. Luckily, Rose Bay is both beautiful and allows dogs off the leash, which makes it the perfect place to meet with Brittany from Pet Rescue Pound Paws and the gorgeous Gretel. <laughs> How long have you had her? 
We've had Gretel for three years now. Yeah. And where did you get it? So we adopted Gretel from Blacktown Pounds. We did the whole Pound Paws sort of tour of local pounds in the area and she just stood out so much. She was in her own little world while all the dogs were sort of barking around her and we knew that she was the one. Yeah, really? That's awesome. <laughs> we were looking for a pet to introduce to the family as we had a 14-year-old sausage dog, blind and deaf, and we thought introducing a companion would help this sausage dog. Yeah. And they got along so well, um, just because she's so placid and loving yeah. and gentle. And it was just such a great adoption story. Yeah. Now you run Dog Days. Yeah. Tell me about that. So we host Dog Days around Australia to help raise awareness about pet adoption. Yeah. Um, so we do this on the, the back of Pampaw's charity. Um, it's a great way to sort of educate people about the importance of pet adoption, as well as connect uh, people within the city areas to outside pound dogs. So it saves them from driving all the way to shelters and pounds in country right. rural areas. Okay. We make it a lot of fun. We want to make it sort of approachable. Yep. We have like funny things like puppy crystal healing to VIP really? judges for best dog trick, best dog costume. So it's a fun day. We even have like this famous golden bone dog race where the dogs and humans all race against each other. So <laughs> a cool. pinch of that after drinks. It's good. <laughs> yeah, that's got to get a little messy. <laughs> but it's, it's good fun. It's, um, it's a really great community sort of um, coming together yeah. and, and most importantly raising awareness about an important cause. Yeah, definitely. You must have some favourite spots around Sydney. Yeah, gosh, I have so many. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rose Bay Beach, where we are now, is beautiful. Otherwise, Pitwater Beach, which has harbour views. Bondi to Brunchy Coastal Walk's amazing. Oh, yeah. As well as all the pubs. I mean, you can head to the Inner West and go to the Henson, or go to the Golden Sheep in Double Bay, or the Bucket List right on Bondi Beach. They allow dogs there? All of them, and you can have a drink of your dog too. That's perfect. <laughs> Some of them have dog menus as well. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Oh, that is great. If you'd like to find out more about the charity and if you all maybe support, check out their website, which is poundpaws.com.au. Isn't that right, Gretel? <laughs> Knowing how to take good care of your dog from puppyhood through to its senior years is not always easy. That's why I wrote my new book, Eat, Play, Love, Your Dog, to help. From food and nutrition to addressing common behaviour problems and tips for good dog health, it's the ultimate guide for every dog owner. Available in all good bookstores, online and pet stock, visit poochesatplay.com for details. five dogs will have gum or dental disease by the age of three, which can lead to chronic pain and wide-ranging effects throughout the rest of their body. Developed with a vet scientist, Bell and Bone Dental Sticks contain active ingredients that help reduce the buildup of plaque and tartar in a dog's mouth. Grain-free and made in Melbourne with natural healthy ingredients including lean kangaroo meat, mint for freshness and turmeric to help reduce the risk of gum inflammation. These dental sticks can help promote whole mouth health. As dental health is one of the most significant areas of health and well-being for your dog, they can form an important part of your dog's daily oral care regime. Available in three sizes for small, medium and large dogs, the Bell & Bone Dental Sticks can be found at your local pet stock store. Or to learn more about their treat range, visit bellandbone.com.au. Become a Pet Stock Rewards member and earn rewards on thousands of products and services store-wide. Receive great upfront benefits and look out for exclusive member opportunities. Terms and conditions apply. Visit the website for details. When it comes to choosing the right food for your dog, it can be downright confusing. And as I'm no expert, I have roped in Lara to share some insights from her new book about what we need to consider. My challenge to you, Lara, is to condense one of your sections of your book into about a two minute piece. Three minute piece. Okay. Yes, it can be really tough, Morgan, because historically there's only been two types of dog food. We've got, normally got our dry dog food or our canned wet. But as the pet food industry evolves and many owners now put a much greater focus on pet nutrition, we are seeing a wide range of new products and diet types on store shelves. There can be a lot of marketing hype and on pack claims though, so at the end of the day it comes down to looking at and really understanding what the ingredients list is telling you. Yeah, so overall, what should we be looking for? Well, we know from a dog's diet in the wild that, you know, evolutionary diets, they had around, you know, 5% carbs, things like grasses and grains and all that in their diet, fruit and veggies. But overall, they really thrived on high protein and high fat diets. So we do want to see a variety of the ingredients in their diet that will deliver that balanced nutrition and it does represent what they would eat in the wild when consuming their prey. Now, I'm just looking at these ingredients. 
they are quite different to that. Yeah, they're gonna look really different on every pack depending on the food type. So whether it's a dry versus a wet versus a raw or other kind of diet, they are gonna really differ and you're gonna see different things at the top of the list versus what's down at the end. Okay, so looking at the list, what should they be, what should we be looking for? Like what should be at the top, what should mm -hmm. be at the bottom? Number one, first and foremost, is protein. And while, you know, we find protein in things like eggs and dairy products as well as some grains and legumes, I believe meat as the protein source should be at the top of the list for dogs to deliver those essential amino acids that they can only get from their diet each day for their cell, their tissue and their muscle growth and repair. So in the first three ingredients, and if all three ingredients are a named meat product, I'm really happy with that. Then we want to see facts as well. And then as we go down, we want to see those things like the fruit and veggies and all those other supplements that really deliver a, you know, a real bang to our dogs. So fruit and veggies and grains are important as well? Yeah, as I said, we know that they can take on carbohydrates into a dog's diet. It is very controversial, but we know from the evolutionary diet that they can handle it and it does form part of it. So yes, we want to see them, but we want to see them at the tail end. Why are carbs so high on this list? Well, depending on how the food is made, like with kibble, because of the cooking process and it has to be bound together it needs starch to hold it together so you are going to see things like grains and cereals higher up on the list and just because something's grain free doesn't necessarily mean that it's better for your dog because it's still going to have lots of carbs in there because it's needed yeah and there's so many other things on this list that's right so if you've got a, a raw food for example the amino acids the 12 essential amino acids that a dog needs as part of their diet that they can't produce themselves that must come through their food it's going to be naturally found in here whereas Things like this, it needs to be added back in, which is why you see all those technical names as well. Right, so if, if people are unsure mm -hmm. about these things, where can, what can they do? I definitely recommend calling the manufacturer or looking on their website and asking them about their processes and the ingredients that they use, but also look at the ingredients list. It tells you a lot. So I'm gonna check out something like Big Dog, full of all the things that my dog Good needs. Good place to start. It's awesome, thank you. Check out Lara's book. And check out the Big Dog website. Would you like to win a Pawson prize pack valued at over two and a half thousand dollars for you and your pooch? One lucky winner will win this amazing prize, including a year's supply of VitaPet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, NextGuard Spectrum monthly chews, and DGG grooming products and tools, as well as a $250 pet stock gift card, Lexia Me memory foam bed, and a brand new DGG wardrobe. Two runners up will also receive a $500 VitaPets treat pack each. Simply tell us in 50 words or less how your furry friend shows their love for you. Visit the Pooches at Play website to enter. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed the episode and learnt a lot too. I sure did. I learned so much every episode. Oh, good to know. If you'd like to follow up anything you've seen or for plenty of other tips, visit the Pooches at Play website. Or buy Lara's book. Ah, oh, thanks, Mom. That could help too. Got my mates back. <laughs> See you next time, guys. See you next week. Hey, Dust.